nervous? You're tired? <laughs> feel anxious? But I'm also excited because usually when I feel like that, God is about to do something. Uh, yeah, I got a call last night. Uh, we worked a 15-hour day yesterday. We finished the last roof in the dark with flashlights. It was a really rough day for Crossroads. Got home. I pretty I took a shower and pretty much went straight to bed. And then Lad <laughs> Ladonna was like right here in my face like, wake up. <laughs> Pastor Brian's on the phone. And I was just blinking really hard, you know, like, what? But, um, man, it's an honor to be able to, to preach the Word of God, uh, no matter what. And the good thing about today is that I absolutely know that whatever, like, like Kenny said, whatever, whatever comes out today is not from me because I didn't have time to pre prepare. I, it's, not, it's not out of my own gifting or strength that any come, anything comes out good today. It's all anointing and straight from the Spirit of God. So I hope you guys are ready to receive a word from God. Where's Anthony at? Anthony Romo? Okay, Anthony has Anthony has a bag of bubble gum. And whether you chew bubble gum or not, I want every single person to take a piece of this bubble gum. Do you have enough for the whole class? Well, yes, I do. <laughs> so um, don't chew it yet. Hang on to it for just a second. I'll give them a little bit of time to get everything passed out. Already? Hey, as they're as they're passing that out, I just want to say, I just want to say something about Vernon Kinnear. Uh, I don't. Um, I've heard Vernon preach a couple times. Not really that many times. I, you know, I didn't, I didn't come to this church or Grace Methodist whenever Vernon was preaching. So. I haven't heard him preach that much, but, but there's something about Vernon that you can just feel the Spirit of God on him when he comes and he talks to you and he says something. And a lot of times whenever I, whenever I finish preaching, Vernon will come up and encourage me in some way, saying that I felt that, I felt like that was from God, and, and I, I just can't tell you guys how much that means to me when a man of God such as Vernon comes and says, you did a good job. It just... Man, it feels so good to hear him say that. And that's what he did last week. And uh, I think more importantly than the worship today or more important than the word, I think the most important thing that we can do here today, and I know Ryan's already prayed for him, but I, I want to do it one more time. But I want to do it as a family uh, would pray for someone. So I want us all to stand up on our feet. Guys, if you guys will join hands with someone next to you uh, stretch across the aisles let's all do this as one body as a family let's pray for Vernon Kinnear when Jesus taught the disciples to pray he said uh, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven is anyone sick in heaven would you agree with me and say that it's the will of God for Vernon Kinnear to be healed then yes on earth as it is in heaven amen Okay, bow your heads. Lord, we just come right now, and Lord, your, your word promises that whatever we bind, whatever is bound in heaven is bound on earth. So God, we just want to, I want to bind sickness right now in Jesus' name in Vernon Kinnear's body. God, I want to bind fear. I want to bind, bind doubt. I want to bind anxiety. God, I want to bind any kind of spirit that's coming against that whole family. I know there's some other things going on. Uh, in their lives right now. So God, I just bind any spirit that's coming against that family right now in Jesus' name. Also, God, we want to lose some things. We want to lose peace. We want to lose healing. We want to lose joy. God, we want to lose your, your Holy Spirit into that, into that uh, hospital room. And just, God, we just want to lose all your power in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, does everyone have a piece of gum? Not yet? I want to give you, uh, I'll give you a little tip about a piece of gum.
There's, <laughs> I've said this before, but there's something that happens on Sunday morning um, to a lot of us. Saturday night usually is the, I usually go to bed early. I don't have to get up for Bible study that morning because the guys are coming to church, so we usually get up at 5, 5.30, whatever. So uh, on Sunday morning, it's the most rested that I've been all week long, you know. I, I get up, I've had more sleep than I've had any other day, and then I, I get into the seat and I sit down and I get ready to hear Pastor Brian preach, and as he starts to preach, I uh, find myself doing this. And I, you know, and I know we all do this, but you'll uh, you'll uh, switch like this, switch like this, you know, and and you do whatever you know. You're trying to do whatever you can to stay awake, and it's, I'm just being honest. You guys, you guys know, you guys know how it is when when the pastor starts preaching. Sometimes, even if he's preaching something amazing, you just start to why why does that happen? And Guys, that's not just a physical thing. There's something going on in the spiritual realm that we can't see. That it's it. When something's being spoke, the word of God is being preached and the spirit of God is moving. But the enemy is in this building too. And he doesn't want you to hear the word. He doesn't want you to grab onto whatever's being said. And so that little piece of gum right there. So my little, my little tip for you guys. I, we always have gum. I bring it. And if I start to feel tired, I grab that piece of gum and I stick it in my mouth and I start to chew. It's almost impossible to fall asleep while you're chewing a piece of gum. I don't know why. Okay, but that's what that gum is for today. <laughs> don't fall asleep. Something's going to happen here today. I'm going to go ahead and speak something out. And I know this has freaked some of you guys out because it used to freak me out really bad. Some of you guys are going to get filled with the Holy Spirit today. Amen. That, that's still on my mind about vision, about where we're going and what we're doing. But we can't get there and we can't do it without the anointing and the power of the Holy Spirit. You must be filled with the Spirit. So many things about the Spirit of God that have been abused and uh, taken out of context and, and uh, faked that it, I know it, I know it freaks some of you guys out. It used to freak me out really bad. But I just want to, Let's say, I, let's say I got my paycheck yesterday, and I had, a, a, I had all my cash in my pocket. I cashed my check, and when I got home, I realized that one of those bills was counterfeit. I'd be upset, right? Uh, it's probably be impossible to get my money back because if I went to the bank and said, you gave me some counterfeit, they're not going to believe you, and you're, not, you just, you're just out that money. So you're going to be upset. But even though... Some of the bills that they handed you were counterf counterfeit. Are you throwing out the rest of the bills? No. So, guys, I just want to tell you that being filled with the Spirit, it's a real thing. And even though some people have faked it, don't, don't completely discard it and throw it all out because it's worth something. It can help you get where you're going. It's, it's the very power of God. So... Uh, Proverbs 18.6 says this, 18.16. A man's gift makes room for him and brings him before the great. I think you guys are great. You guys are, uh, this is a great church. This is a, this is a room full of great people. And so I gave you a piece of gum this morning. Gift, my gift has made room for me. <laughs> you know, um, I did a lot of studying before um, because of when I was studying this thing about vision. Uh, God has placed a gift in each and every one of you guys. And some of you guys don't even believe that. You don't believe you're gifted in any way, but that's not true. You have a gift. That gift we talked about a little bit last time, that that gift is a seed, and it's meant to be planted into the world. So every one of you guys have a responsibility to plant your seed that God has placed inside of you. It's your gift. Now, you don't, you're born with that gift. Whether you realize it or not, it's, it's part of your DNA. It's, it's, it's part of uh, you being created. God placed it there. You have that gift. You can't get rid of it. You can choose not to use it, but you have it. Now, once you discover what that gift is, 
if you're filled with the Spirit, all of a sudden that gift has power, that gift is anointed by God, and then, and then we go change the world. Then, then we hit that vision hard because now we have vision, we have giftings, and we have the anointing of the Holy Spirit, and now we're ready to move forward on what we're called to do. Walk right into your destiny. So, guys, gifts cannot be taken away. You are given gifts when you're born. You're made with it. It cannot be taken away. Anointing can be taken away. What, anoint, what anointing is, anointing is, basically, it's the approval of God. God sees you operating in the gifts. He says, I'm going to anoint that because I approve it. And then it's given power and you're, you can do great things. If you start to get off track, God doesn't take your gift away. He might take the anointing away, but he doesn't take the gifts away. And so a lot of people continue to offer, operate in their gifts without anointing. Uh, I think a lot of that's going on nowadays. But I got some things written down about gifts. It says the meaning of life is to find your gift. The purpose of life is to give it away. Your job is what you get paid for. Your gift is what you were made for. Your gift is the thing that you do absolutely best with the least amount of effort. Anthony told me about a sermon that uh, some of you guys went to James River and uh, heard uh, John Lindell preach about a gift about what does it feel like when you give a gift but it doesn't get used you know as the giver as the giver of that gift you give it to somebody but then you realize that they never use it how does that make you feel <laughs> so if that's ever happened to you that's how God feels when he gives you a gift and you never use it it's like why I gave you something that's that's vital to to you walking in your de- Tim open your gum take out your piece of gum <laughs> I'm <laughs> sorry, man. I love you, Tim. <laughs> I only did that because I knew Tim would take it. Your face is really red right now. <laughs> I'm not going to preach long today. I'm going to skip a bunch of this stuff because I, I do believe that something is going to happen at the end of the service. I do believe that some of you guys are going to get filled with the Spirit, like I said. So we're going to have to, we're going to have to have some time at the end of the service for some of you guys to come forward. Guys, when you get saved, you do receive the Spirit. Uh, God, God comes into your heart and He lives there. But there's something completely different that happens. Uh, that's that's more. It's it's. The, this anointing that I'm talking about, it's the power of God that allows you to go out and operate in your gifts, head towards that vision and change the world, and you absolutely need it if you want to fulfill the destiny that God has for you. You can you cannot do it without it. And so I'm not going to get into a big sermon about speaking in tongues and things like that. I just want to tell you guys straight up and if you don't if you don't agree with me, that's fine. I w- Pastor Brian told me something when I first came to this church, changed my life. Because I used to hear sermons, and I, uh, I didn't agree with something that was said, and I would completely just stop listening from that point. Sometimes we would just get up and leave. Uh, that's, how, that's how bad my attitude was towards uh, if I heard something that I didn't agree with. Terrible. But Pastor Brian told me one time, we were in a, we were in a service, and uh, the guy said something crazy like, if you don't pay your tithes, you're going to go to hell. He said something like, I was like, What? And I was ready to get up and leave. And Pastor Brian said, eat the meat and spit out the bones. And I, I don't know what happened. I took that and I applied that to everything that I've ever listened to from that point. And, and uh, even though somebody may have said something that wasn't from the Spirit, it's just like that counterfeit thing that I talked about. I'm not throwing out everything just because that one thing wasn't from God, okay? The, 
because the, when I listened on from that point, the man said some anointed things, some really good things, that if I had got up and walked out of that service, I would have missed the word that God had for me that day, okay? So, if I say some things today that you don't agree with, eat the meat, spit out the bones, okay? You don't have to agree with everything I say to, to get something out of the word today, all right? Okay, so, being filled with the Spirit. Some will say that it, uh, speaking in tongues is a prerequisite for receiving any other gift from the Spirit. I don't believe that. And if you believe that, that's fine. Okay? I believe that um, the greatest evidence of a Spirit-filled life is love. Um, because I was the most selfish person I, I know before uh, coming to Christ, before being filled with the Spirit. And now... I find myself doing things that I would have never done, you know, uh, stopping on the side of the road, get, uh, buying someone a meal, uh, giving someone money, uh, doing all kinds of things that I was too, way too selfish to do before being filled with the Spirit. And so that, that kind of love that you show towards other people, that's something that cannot be faked, okay? People can fake being fake, speaking in tongues, they can fake a lot of different things, but you can't fake love very long before the truth comes to the service. Just can't fake it. Okay, so I do believe in speaking in tongues. I do speak in tongues, okay, every day. So I'm not saying that because I don't believe in that. I do. I do believe in that. And I, I think that's an awesome gift from the Lord. I, I love to speak to God in my prayer language when I don't know what to pray for. I can just start praying in the Spirit. And I just feel a peace and joy rush over me. So I, I don't want you to get the wrong idea. I do believe in speaking in tongues. Whenever I was filled with the Spirit, I did speak in tongues. I, I needed that to happen for me because my mouth was the problem. Okay? So I don't, I don't know. I believe that if you came up for prayer at the end of the service and we prayed for you to get filled with the Spirit, um, some of you would feel an overwhelming peace rush over you. And maybe that's because you've never had peace in your life. Some of you may start laughing uncontrollably. Maybe it's because you have a hard time feeling joy, feeling happy, letting that out. Some of you would start crying uncontrollably because you never, you're too tough to cry. You're too tough to let anything out. But as the spirit comes in, it would, you just lose that emotion, just flows over you. Some of you who can't control your tongue, if you'll submit that to the Lord, you might start speaking in tongues. So I don't know what's going to happen today, but I know that if you will surrender to God, if you will say, God, this, this is what, when David Craig prayed for me, this is what he asked me. Because he said, You're, you feel with the Spirit? I said, no. He said, uh, well, can we pray for you to get uh, filled with the Spirit? And I said, no, I'm, no, I'm not comfortable with that. <laughs> and then he asked me this question. If God has something more for you, do you want it? So ask yourself that question today. If God has something more for you today, do you want it? It might be out of your, your way of thinking. It might sound weird. It might seem strange. But just simply ask yourself this question. If God has something more for you today, do you want it or not? Okay. Uh, go over to Romans chapter 12. many sermons you've probably heard on Romans chapter 12 verse 1 and 2 here we go again Romans chapter 12 verse 1 says I appeal to you therefore brothers by the mercies of God to present your bodies as a living sacrifice holy and acceptable to God which is your spiritual worship do not be conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewal of your mind that by testing you may discern what is the will of God what is good and acceptable and perfect. He 
you're transformed by the renewing of your mind. A renewed mind transforms people. Transform people, change the world. Amen? Um, in order for in order for me to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit in order to receive everything that God had for me I had to re- I had to my mind had to be renewed because I was so against those kind of things it weirded me out it did but when that question was asked do I want everything that God has for me yes of course I do and so I had to I had to go to a place that felt uncomfortable I had to uh, let someone lay hands on me and pray for me and um, I just had to come to a place of surrender and when I when I did that uh, something amazing happened in my life guys this is I know some of you guys have heard this before but this is uh, this is undeniable for me is that we had been going into the jail uh, for months and I was giving people my testimony I was telling them what was going on in my life I was excited about Jesus I was uh, teaching the Romans road a lot because I thought this is this is a easy way to lead someone to getting I wanted to see somebody get saved so bad I wanted somebody to have have what I had so much we were going into the jail every single Tuesday and and praying God I want to see somebody get saved I want to lead someone to Christ I've never done that God I want to I want to see somebody get saved I want to I want to be standing right there when I know that they met Jesus God I want to experience that for months nobody got saved it was really discouraging we went to this Bible study with David Craig. I got filled with the Spirit. We went back the, that next Tuesday, and I taught the Romans Road again. Same thing, same message, same testimony. Ten men got saved after being filled with the Spirit. Oh, months, months going before that, no one got saved. Now all of a sudden, ten people got saved. We went back the next week, fifteen got saved. Went back the next week. Another 12 got saved. It happened every single week after that. And that built my faith up so much. It got, got, man, then I was like, man, okay, now now I'm filled with the Spirit. My words have God's anointing on them. I I have the power of God coming through me, speaking through me. And now everywhere we went, things were happening where people were just coming up and saying, I see something different in you. What do I got to do to get saved? It started happening just like it did in the Bible. And that's because when the disciples went out, they waited in the upper room to be filled with the Holy Spirit before they went out and changed the world. They were scared before that. They were terrified. This, this baptism of the Holy Spirit will give you that boldness, that courage, that strength that you need to go out and change the world. We keep singing about changing the world, guys. Are we, do we really want to change the world? You need God's power to do it. You can't do it on your own. You never have been. You never will be able to. You need the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You need to be filled with the Spirit. I can't stress that enough. Turn over to Matthew chapter 13. We're not going to be there long. Matthew chapter 13, verse 33. This is Jesus. Uh, he told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like leaven that a woman took and hid in three measures of flour till it was all leavened. We read that verse uh, in Romans 12, 2, that you're transformed by the renewing of your mind. Uh, today I'm going to relate leaven to your mind, what's going on in your mind. God, Jesus says that if you'll hide a little bit of kingdom in your mind, eventually it'll start to take over your whole mind. Right? And then your mind will be renewed and transformed. Okay, so uh, turn over to Mark chapter 8.
verse 13. It says, and he left them, got into the boat again, and went to the other side. Now when they had forgotten to bring bread, they had only one loaf with them in the boat. And he cautioned them, saying, watch out, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the leaven of Herod. And they began discussing with one another the fact that they had no bread. And Jesus, aware of this, said to them, why are you discussing the fact you have no bread? Do you not yet perceive or understand are your hearts hardened? Have your, having eyes do you not see? Having ears do you not hear? And do you not remember when I broke five loaves for the 5,000? How many baskets of broken pieces did you take up? And they said to him, 12. And seven for the 4,000. How many baskets of broken pieces did you take up? And they said to him, seven. And he said to them, do you not, do you not yet understand? So here they are. They're in the boat. Uh, Jesus says, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of Herod. And then they're all like, Peter, did you bring the bread? No. John, did you, you got the bread, man? If Judas has the money, he'd probably, why did he buy the bread? Right, they start. And so here Jesus is saying, I'm not, I'm not talking about bread. I'm not talking about bread. Well, let's pretend for a second that I am. I broke five loaves for 5,000. How many baskets did you take up? Twelve. Seven for 4,000. How many baskets did you take up? Seven. This is, the, this is the way that heaven works. This is the, this is the heavenly math, Mr. McClure. <laughs> we, had, we had less that we had to provide for more people, and we ended up with more leftovers, right? Then we, have, we had it even, uh, we had a little bit more last time to provide for a little bit less people, and we, we had a little bit less leftovers, right? So this is what God's saying. The less that you have, the more God can do with it. Yeah. <laughs> or we're not talking about bread. T- he's, he's saying, don't, don't you get it? It doesn't, it, anything, anything that we're talking about, if you, if you feel like you don't have enough, I can, do, I can do even more with that. You'll end up with even more left over if you'll just give it to me. The leaven of, we read in Matthew 13, 33 about the, the kingdom of God is like someone who hid leaven and then it spreads to the whole lump. Uh, Mark, uh, we, it said, Jesus said, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of Herod. Guys, uh, this is still a word of God for you today. Beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of Herod. Protect your mind. Protect your renewed mind. I know we put some things, uh, the Word of God, we put some things, we hid some things in there, and uh, if nothing else is put in there, that will eventually completely renew the whole thing for the kingdom of God. But Jesus says, beware of the leaven of Herod and the leaven of the Pharisees. Herod, the Herod leaven is like a political yeah, it's cool if you believe in God as long as you don't bring it up in here, okay? Um, it's the, based on the strength of man. So it's this mentality. God helps those who help themselves. I'm a guy who believes in practical thinking and uh, having a plan. Uh, moving towards my purpose, setting goals. I believe in all those things. But I also believe that I will never be able to achieve any of those things without the power of God. I, I still need the Spirit of, Lord, of the Lord to lead me, to guide me, to anoint me, to fill me up constantly, to keep me moving forward. I cannot do that in my own strength. It's not possible. You know where I ended up 
on my own strength? Homeless in a tent. That, that's me on my own without God. I hope some of you don't ever have to end up homeless in a tent to realize that you can't do anything without God. You can't do anything in your, in your own power. Even if you think you are doing it by your own strength, you're not. God is good. <laughs> Pharisee leaven. It's re religious leaven. It's God in form, but not in power. It's talking about God. It's talking about miracles. It's talking about healing. It's singing songs about healing, singing songs about miracles. And guys, we're really dangerous to, to letting that kind of leaven take over our minds. We talk about miracles. We talk about the things of God. We talk about having the power of God. We talk about being led in the Spirit, but a lot of times we're not. We're still doing this thing in our own, in our own strength. Um, Pharisee leaven. Pharisees say the bakery is closed when the last apostle died. You guys believe in miracles? You believe that God is able to heal people today? In order for... How many of you guys are a little bit frustrated that we don't see that happen very often, though? Okay. I, I'm right there with you. I, I'm, I'm feeling that, but I'm tired of that. And so there's going to have to be some renewal of our minds in this place for us to see that happen. We're, we're, we're going to have to, we're going to have to feel uncomfortable sometimes. Some things are going to happen that if you're using your, if you got that Herod leaven in there, you're thinking this practically, this doesn't make any sense. Okay, and that will keep the kingdom leaven from taking over your mind. As long as you keep thinking like that, you're not going to see any miracles. If you keep thinking all worldly and not all flesh and no spirit, we're not going to see those things happen. And so, guys, there has to be a renewal of your mind in order for those things to start taking place at grace. Okay, there's going to be some things that's going to make us all feel uncomfortable. Because the Spirit of God, when He starts moving, some things are going to happen that doesn't make sense to our natural mind. And that's a good thing. That's a good thing. How many of you guys want to see miracles take place right here at Grace Christian Fellowship? Me too. Let me get the praise team to come on back up. So, uh, I never, I never get to preach what I plan on preaching. Yeah, I'm not complaining. But um, last time, last time I was here to preach, I, I, I had a message prepared on gifts, and uh, God changed the whole message to vision, because basically He said. If you have gifts with no vision, where are you going? Where are you going with that? <laughs> so he changed the message to vision. I'm like, okay, now I'm going to preach the gifts. You know, Pastor Brian called. I had this message prepared on gifts. What are you going to do with your gifts if they're not anointed by God? <laughs> he just keeps doing this to me. But... This verse we read out of Proverbs, it says, A man's gift makes room for him and brings him before the great. And I, I studied that whole thing out. Guys, I, I did. I had a whole message prepared about um, 
A gift isn't something that you give like that piece of gum. It's not a it's not something that you can just hand to somebody. It's a it's something that's inside of you. And I man, I studied that thing way out and talk all about uh, your gifts and, and, and what you're supposed to do with your gift and how you figure out what your gift is. And I was so excited about the, to preach that message. And then I got out my strongs and I looked up the word there about gift. And the verse actually means you're not something that's inside of you. Not, not the whole message that I studied out. When it talks about a gift, it's talking about something that you give someone. It really is. It's not talking about a talent. It's not talking about a, a skill. It, it, it's talking about something you give to somebody. You, something you give to somebody will make room for you and bring you before great men. Jesus, the creator of all things, the king of kings, thinks you're great. Every single one of you, he says, they're, they're so great. I love them so much. So much that he would give everything. He would give his very life. And he knew that his word was true. And if he would give that gift, it would make room for him. Right here. And bring him before the great people that he created. That's all of you. Sorry, I didn't get to preach about all the gifts that God puts inside of you. I do believe that God puts gifts and, and talents in, in, in each and every one of you. And God wants to anoint those gifts. And God wants you to step out in faith to start to use those gifts and head towards your destiny. I believe that with my whole heart. But I also believe that I don't want to preach anything out of context, context with that verse because it actually means that, it, that you give somebody something. It'll make room for you. Right now, as we ramp this up, there's a gift. I'm still not talking about your talents. I'm still not talking about your skills. Like I said, God's put those things in there and they're there. But there's a gift that God wants to give to you today that will make room for you in places all over this city. It will take you before great people. People that the world looks at and says, they're not great. But God looks at them and says, they're great. I made them. That's my people. They're called. They have a purpose. They're great. That gift today is the power of the Holy Spirit, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. He has a gift for you that will make room for you and take you before great people. Do you want it? Can you stand up? Okay. We're not going to say a group prayer. I need some people that are filled with the Spirit that know without a doubt they're filled with the Spirit. I need you to, I need you to come to the front right now. I know some of you might be nervous. You might be a little scared. But remember that question we asked earlier. If God has something more for you, do you want it? 
I'll tell you, without a doubt, God does have something more for you. God wants to give you a gift that will make room for you, take you before his great people. If you want to receive, if you're ready to surrender to the Lord completely today, and I'm not talking about getting saved, guys. You have to, you have to be saved in order to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. If you're not saved, go ahead, come forward. Don't wait another second. One more time, if you don't know the Lord and you need to be saved, come forward right now. We've all made that move at one time in our life. Uh, there's nothing to be ashamed of. In fact, we're going to rejoice that you came forward. Amen. Now, for the rest of you, if you've been walking and talking with the Lord and you know you're saved, but you also know deep down in your heart that something's missing, that you can feel it in your spirit, and you know that there's something that God has to do for you. If the Spirit has been speaking to you today through this service, and you know that you need the power of God to fulfill your destiny, I want you to step out of your seat right now come forward we are going to pray for you to be filled with the spirit God has something more for you do you want it Oh my 
Hey guys. Hey guys. All right, guys. Um, basically, I get I'm just a kid. I know I probably shouldn't be up here talking right now. When I first came in here this morning, I had a lot on my chest. Had, had a lot on my heart, had a lot on my soul. And I was kneeling right there. And two of my buddies came and prayed with me. I didn't ask them to, but they did anyways. A lot of people, a lot of people from crossroads, from all over here, come right there, or there, or there, and pray. They kneel for the, they kneel for the altar and pray, and they get that stuff off their chest. Anyways, like I'm saying, we all came here today for something. We all need to hear something today, and I hope everybody's got something today. And I just wanted to say that. I am grateful for God, and I hope everybody got something out of this sermon today. And I just wanted to pray for everybody real quick. If you please bow your heads, Lord, coming this morning, I thank you for everything done for us, Lord. We just, I just thank you for everybody that got saved today, Lord. I thank you for everybody that got healed today, Lord. I thank you for everybody that got helped today, Lord, by you, Lord. And I just want to thank you and lift your name up, Lord, and lift everybody that got up saved today, Lord. I lift Vernon up to you, Lord. I left everybody that needs your Lord, needs you, Lord. And Lord, just keep doing what you're doing, Lord. In your name I pray. Amen. Sorry, taking your time. You guys ready to go change the world? Reach across, hold somebody's hand. Go and change. 